So for this next next part of the digestive system, we're going to look at the, the remainder, the esophagus through the large intestine. And really the focus here is, is to point out that, that really this is just one fancy tube. It's a tube that has been modified in these various regions to carry out the different functions that we associate with regions such as the esophagus or stomach or in the intestines. Um, so I want to use this first slide here just to point out some of the common features, some of the, the, the things that are universal to all four of these regions so that when we look at the individual slides then we can highlight some of those unique features that are, that are used to identify and that are directly associated with some of the unique functions of those regions. And so here, the thing to point out is that this tube is made up of these four layers. And, and all of these regions, again, through the esophagus, out through the small intestine, these are all going to be composed of these four layers. Starting from the lumen, the inside, we first have the mucosa. And the tunica mucosa, this is this membrane here that's composed of first the epithelial lining. And this epithelial lining is either going to be stratified squamous or it's going to be simple columnar. Below this ET layer then is the lamina propria. Again, this is a mucous membrane. So we have the ET layer, and then we have the supportive CT layer down below. And that CT layer is referred to as the lamina propria. And then third within the tunica mucosa is this thin layer of muscle referred to as the muscularis mucosi. So all three of these, the epithelial, the connected tissue or lamina propria, and then this very thin, smooth muscle layer, the muscularis mucosa, these are all part of the tunica mucosa. Below that is then the submucosa, and the submucosa is the supportive, kind of loose CT layer. This is where we find a lot of the major blood vessels. In some areas, we're going to find some of these important glands. We're also going to recognize that there's going to be some important uh, nervous tissue associated with our autonomic nervous system in particular. And so this submucosa layer can be a very thick layer, um, but it's going to have a lot of the important again, arteries and nerves and veins and, and as well as lymphatic. Below that is then the muscular layer, the thick muscular layer referred to as the tunica muscularis. And we've actually looked at these slides before when we were learning about smooth muscle. And, and the, we noticed that there's going to be this inner layer of circular muscle followed by then this outer longitudinal layer. And so we'll be able to look at, at, at how this looks um, in, in respect to the digestive system this time as opposed to just as an example of smooth muscle. And then outside of that, we'll often find then the last layer, the tunica serosa. And, and this tunica serosa is, is true for those that are intraperitoneal, that they have a true serous membrane on the outside. And so in those areas of our digestive system that aren't truly in the peritoneal cavity, then there will be this serosa or serous membrane layer. And as we've, I think, emphasized enough now, that's going to be composed of a simple squamous ET or mesothelium within that loose areolar CT band down below. And so these four layers, the mucosa, submucosa, muscularis, and serosa, are going to be present in nearly all of these different regions of the digestive tract. And what's going to be important is to recognize the unique features, the things that have been modified to be specifically found in those regions. And so if we start with the esophagus, um, the esophagus tends to be one of the easier ones to identify because it is the only one that has a stratified squamous ET. And so here we can see this is going to be the lumen, right? This is now the, the wall of the esophagus moving all the way out to the outer surface. And so once you find the lumen, you then should be looking for the epithelial lining. And in this case, it's, it's clearly stratified squamous. It, it's not the simple columnar that's going to represent all the other regions. And so if you see the stratified squamous, then you know you're in the esophagus. Um, and, and there are other features here that we can use to I help identify. Um, but really, the stratified squamous layer is probably the best when it comes to distinguishing this from the other regions of the digestive tract. There's also going to be then the lamina propria. And so this layer right here, this is going to be that lamina propria layer. That's that supportive connective tissue layer, followed then by the muscularis mucosi. And in the esophagus, this is, tends to be incomplete. So you'll notice that this doesn't form a complete ring. There's this incomplete layer of muscle that surrounds the lumen here. This is still part of the tunica mucosa. So again, from the muscularis mucosa through the lamina propria, out through the ET to the lumen, all of this is that first inner layer, the tunica mucosa. Below that then is going to be the tunica submucosa. 
And this right here represents the tunica submucosa. It's this very loose kind of light layer, right? It has a lot of, of fibers, collagen, elastic fibers, a lot of blood vessels, maybe some adipose tissue. In the esophagus, you'll also find these esophageal glands. And these esophageal glands are important because these are going to help secrete kind of lubrication as that food is moving down through the esophagus towards the stomach. These glands you'll see here are going to secrete their contents to the lumen. And again, that's going to be important as, as the esophagus is moving that food along. And so in the esophagus, you'll find these esophageal glands. That's going to be within the tunica submucosa, right? Often this muscularis mucosi is a pretty good visual because you have CT layers on both sides. And so the CT layers tend to be kind of lighter because of the, the you know, the extracellular space. And so if you see a lighter area inside that muscularis mucosa, that must be the lamina propria. Whereas that lighter CT layer outside that, that's going to be the submucosa. And then the third layer here, this one tends to be very easy to identify because, again, we, we see kind of dense muscular tissue here. Now, in the esophagus, it's kind of unique. It transitions from skeletal muscle in the more proximal region of our esophagus to eventually all smooth muscle as you get to the distal end near the stomach. And, and so this tunica muscularis is going to transition again from skeletal muscle to smooth muscle as you move from proximal to distal esophagus. In this area, a lot of this looks like skeletal muscle. You have those kind of more patchy structures within the nuclei pushed to the very outer edge, one of those classic cross sections of the um, skeletal muscle. But this is the tunica muscularis. And then outside it here is going to be the outer area. Now, in the case of the esophagus, this one does not have a serous membrane. So we call this the tunica adventitia. And this is a fibrous CT layer. This is actually going to be fixing the esophagus to, to the surrounding connective tissue. And so the esophagus isn't kind of floating around within a body cavity. This is going to be fixed to the body wall using this outer layer, the tunica adventitia. And this is more fibrous CT. And so again, the thing to notice is the stratified squamous layer here as part of the mucosa. This is a very nice defining feature when it comes to the esophagus. We'll then see the CT layer, the lamina propria, followed by then a very thin, and in the esophagus, incomplete um, muscularis mucosi. Below that then is our second layer, the submucosa. And in the case of the esophagus, you'll often see these large, prominent esophageal glands that are going to help secrete contents to help lubricate that food as it moves through the lumen of the esophagus. And then finally, down below, we have the tunica muscularis, and it transitions again in the esophagus from skeletal to then smooth muscle as you move from proximal to distal. And then finally, outside here, we have the tunica adventitia, and that's going to be the CT layer that's going to help um, kind of anchor or hold the esophagus to the surrounding tissue. If we continue on to the stomach, things get a little bit more complex, but we still see the same four layers. And so here's our lumen. Here we can see the ET layer. And here you're going to notice for the first time that we have simple columnar. This is very different from what we just saw. And so all of the remainder, the stomach, the small intestines, the large intestines, these are going to have simple columnar. There's going to then be this very, very significant lamina propria layer. This is that CT layer. Now, we're going to talk about some of the features of this here in a moment. And then we have this now complete thin muscular layer. This is that muscularis mucosa, this layer right here. And this is going to serve as a nice visual boundary between the mucosa and then down below the submucosa. And so here down here, we're getting to the submucosa. And what this view doesn't show would then be the various muscle layers as the tunica muscularis and then eventually the outer layer. Now, there are two different regions of the stomach that we're having you look at with the histology slides. There's the fundic and then the pyloric stomach. This is the fundic stomach. And, and what we can notice here is that there are these pits, right? So there's the, the ET layer, the epithelial layer on the surface isn't just one continuous ring. There are these little extensions, these pits, these gastric pits that extend down. And more importantly, at the end of these pits, they continue down as then gastric glands. And these gastric glands are all of these 
kind of pink and purple structures here. These are all cells that are going to be secreting these gastric fluids up into these gastric pits and eventually out to the lumen. And so these gastric pits, in this case, they, they tend to be um, quite shallow in the fundic stomach within a very, very prominent gastric gans below. Now, if we look closely at the ET layer, you can see, hopefully you're convinced that this is a simple layer. This is that simple columnar layer. You can see here the simple columnar layer within these gastric pits that extend down only a little bit. Below that is then where you found these gastric glands. And so these glands down here, these are all really continuations, all the very narrow continuations of these gastric pits. You'll notice in these gastric glands, there are two really obvious cell types. There are these pink ones with the very prominent nucleus in the center, and then there are these purple ones that seem to be more granular. If we look closely at this, here they are. Here are those nice round pink ones with a very, very large prominent nucleus right in the center. These are called parietal cells. So the pink ones, the nice spherical pink ones with the nice central nucleus, these are the parietal cells. And these are the ones that secrete the uh, hydrochloric acid, as well as this molecule called intrinsic factor that's important for the, the um, absorption and digestion of, of a vitamin. But in particular, these are the ones that are secreting the, the acid, hydrochloric acid, that is going to provide that really low pH to the stomach. And so the parietal cells are the ones that are pink and circular with the very prominent central nucleus. The other ones, these are the granular ones. These are called chief cells. And these chief cells, again, you can see nice nucleus, but you see a lot of granules throughout. And these chief cells are going to be the ones that are secreting some of the enzymes, particularly enzymes associated with pepsin and, and lipase. These are enzymes involved in protein and lipid digestion. And so the chief cells, if I go back two slides, the chief cells are the kind of the darker purple ones that have a lot of granules, whereas the parietal cells are these nice spherical pink ones with a very prominent central nucleus. These are both only found in that fundic region of the stomach. So if you see the parietal cells and you see the chief cells, then you know you're going to be within the fundic region. Whereas the other one, the pyloric region, this is not going to have either of those. And so the gastric glands are really just going to be lined with these mucus producing cells that help protect the, the, the surface of the stomach. So these, these mucus cells that line this, these are going to be secreting mucus that's going to help kind of protect the so surface from the very acidic contents produced by the other ones. So the pyloric region in here, we can see there's the gastric pits and we can see these gastric pits tend to extend down maybe halfway through the lamina propria. And down below, we don't see any of those nice, obvious parietal or chief cells that we saw in the fundic region of the stomach. Again, down below, we have the muscularis mucosi, and then we get into the submucosa where we see blood vessels and nerves and all sorts of other tissue.